It's time for some field training. Let's jump into some advanced wars. I can't tell you how happy I am about this. We go over the basics of troop movement and attack controls in this training mission. All right, let's go. Let's get started. We'll begin with the simple training mission to get you comfortable with the basics of movement and combat. Take a look at these two orange infantry units. They are both under your command. The blue unit here is an enemy unit. Oh, and this marker here, that's your cursor. Use the left stick to move the cursor around. You also use it to give your unit's commands, see the unit information, and more. Select this unit, please. For now, move the cursor over the infantry unit circle here and press A to select it. All right, we'll go and do that. When you use select a unit, the area around it becomes highlighted. This area shows that your selected unit's range of movement. Now order your unit to approach the enemy. Press and move the cursor and press A. After your unit moves, the command menu will appear. The only thing that this unit can do now is wait. And so select uh, wait and then press A to confirm your command. Mm -hmm. Do you see what happened to your unit? Its color turned darker. That means this unit can't receive any more orders this turn, but don't worry, you'll be able to use it again your next turn. Now select your next infantry unit. I got it circled for you here. See how the enemy's unit space is highlighted in red? That means that it's within attack range. Since the infantry are direct combat units, you need to be adjacent to your target to attack. Please move your unit next to the enemy so we can fire away. Great job! Great job! Now let's select fire from the menu and target the enemy unit. did some damage to the enemy. You took some counterfire damage too, but since you initiated the attack, your units fared much better. When you finish giving orders to your units, it's time to end your turn. Due to this, press A and an empty space to display the, drop the map menu. The map menu provides all the information and choices you need in order to enhance the playing experience. For now, I need you to select the end turn to continue the lesson. Go ahead and do that now. All right, I will do so. Wait a second, this is an Olaf's units. They might be blue, but they are not blue moon. Though I do have to say, I like the remix of Olaf's theme. It's actually really good. I think all the remixes in this game have been absolutely stellar so far. It's your turn again, but hang on a second. Do you see those n numbers on the units? Those indicate the unit's HP, which means hit points. All units begin with 10 HP, but as they take damage in battle, their HP will decrease. When the unit reaches 0 HP, it'll vanish from the screen. Notice that your unit currently has more HP than the enemy unit does. The unit that attacks first generally has the advantage. That's why you should pick your battles carefully and always try to fire first. Units also lose some of their firepower when they get damaged, so it's better to fire on the enemy with this undamaged unit. Let's select yours now. Now. I'm pretty sure that these guys... Ah, uh, no, it's not even gonna let me. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure that a 5 would still be able to beat a 2, no problem, but because now won't let us do anything else, let's go select these guys. Commander. Commander, did you know that there's an easier way to give attack orders? If I may, let me. Sh I'd like to show you. See the highlighted enemy unit? It's within in attack range, so we can use the quick fire on it. Try selecting the enemy unit directly. Those guys are kind of sprained there a little bit, don't you think? Well done. Since you also defeated the enemy unit, notice that you didn't take any damage. I call that a win-win. Congrats, you've now completed your very first field training lesson. I'm so proud of you. Are you ready for the next lesson? I mean, I guess so. Even though I don't really need the basic training. But I might as well humor him now. Cities and Terrain. The next lesson all will teach you is about how to capture cities and use terrain for defensive cover. Hmm. 
Hmm. Looks like the enemy has deployed a mech, or mechanized infantry unit. These units are tougher and can even deal serious damage to vehicles. Lucky for you, I planned for this and gave you a mech of your very own to practice with. Infantry may not be able to defeat a mech unit in direct combat, so you may want to use the terrain for a defensive cover. I think we'll start by teaching you how to capture cities. Let's let this infantry unit. Neutral cities are color gray, but they change to match your army's color when you capture them. Capturing cities is vital to your success on the battlefield, so please attempt to capture and control as many cities as you can. To begin, please move your unit onto the city. Please select the capture command, if you say so. The city is now par partially captured. It'll take a bit more time to capture it completely once your foot soldiers, meaning infantry and mech units, can capture a city. Each turn a unit spends capturing a city lowers the city's capture number by that unit's current HP. Be careful not to move a unit that it is in the process of capturing the city or you'll have to restart the capture all over again. The same is true if the capturing unit loses all its HP before the city is fully captured. Do your best to protect units that are trying to secure new bases as they are vulnerable during the process. Let's let this unit next. Well, I feel like our mechs are probably going to be in a bit of a trouble here. So let's get them capturing this city. Nice work. Now select this infantry. Now fire on that infantry. Hey, wanna hear a tip? You can actually speed things up by holding ZR and uh, give it a try when you fire on that enemy. Oh, if only the frontier grunts were here, they finally have more girl soldiers they wanted to fight with. I like that there's different, like, styles and stuff for the infantry. It actually makes them varied up, and it's not just a clone of the same person. Excellent. Okay, now select this infantry unit. Notice anything different? The movement cost is doubled in mountains, but such terrain offers defensive advantages that compensate for extra movement costs. You'll understand better once you fire on the enemy. Go ahead, engage the enemy and fire. Uh. Yeah, mountains offer a lot of defense, so it's best to always try to keep your infantry in them if you can. The enemy unit took less damage than the first one you attacked, didn't it? That's because of another terrain feature called defensive cover. Defensive cover in the mountains is the number shown here. A 4 in that case, the defensive cover on the planes is a 1. The higher the defensive cover rating is, the less damage a defending unit will take. Does that make sense? Great, I knew you'd be a quick study. Now please, end your turn by pressing A on an empty space. Yep, uh, going after my mechs. At this point, our boys up in the mountains are just trading blows with each other. Mac units really pack a punch, don't they? Luckily, even the neutral city still provides defensive cover. Another thing. Another thing to keep in mind is that movement and costs differ between unit types. Did you notice that mechanists could only move two spaces, but weren't slowed by the mountain terrain? Whenever you need information like this, just place a cursor over whatever you want to learn and press the ZR easy peasy. This works on terrain features as well as other unit types. Always remember, knowledge is power. It's a good idea to order your units to capture at the start of your turn. That way you can be sure you won't forget to give that order. A completely healthy trooper can capture a city in two turns, so have them stay put and get it done. If you say so. Normally, I'd be more for going on the attack, but that's just me. Now that the city is yours now, notice how it changes color to match the army. Now select this wounded mech unit. 
Because this unit took damage the last round, it'll take a bit longer to capture the city. Keep that in mind as you defend your troops. Since your unit was heard, it can lower it can lower the capture number only by its current HP amount, leaving it vulnerable to another attack. Let's attack the enemy mech unit instead. Why don't you finish training while I prepare for the next lesson? All you have to do is defeat all the enemy units. Hmm. Yeah, I think we can handle that with whatever units we have right now, but we need to take out these guys up in the mountains first and foremost. Yeah, let's just take these guys out first. There we go. The mountains are clear. Now, I'm going to guess that you guys are probably going to attack my infantry right here, but because there are five and there are two, we should easily be able to counter them no problem. And then we'll have the mountain troops and the mechs in the city capture or take out the last of the me mech units here, and basically we will have one. I don't suppose he's going to be dumb and attack them. Nope, he's not going to attack them out units. He's going to go right for this city. Oh, you're going for the city. All right, then. Well, let's just take these guys out, no problem. Oh, that's actually cool. You actually see, like, Orange Star stuff inside the city that it's captured. That's actually a really nice, like, little touch. And there we go. They're done for. Hmm. I hope you have a better understanding of the terrain defenses and capturing techniques now. Focus on the strategies that I've taught you so far. Use them well, and victory will be yours. I'm sure of it. So a little bit of a tip, uh, if it's usually a rounding up st style for uh, enemy damage, if it's a five and up, then it's always a guarantee that it's going to just go to uh, the next 10. So it's just like if it's a 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, whatever that is, it'll basically just do about as much as a 30. So that's why I knew that my mountain troops were going to be able to take out those mechs, no problem. All right, final lesson. This lesson will teach you everything you need to uh, need to succeed in combat. AKA, she's just gonna throw us out the deep end and tell us to fend for ourselves. Also about repairing and transporting units. Looks like the enemy has surprised our forces and damaged these tank units, but don't worry, I'll teach you how to even the odds. We'll need to repair them in order to have any hope of winning here. This unit is so badly damaged and out of ammo, so let's patch it up. Can we select this tank unit first, please? Alright, if you say so, no. Uh, first things first, I need to get to the circle tank because I accidentally misclicked. Repair to repair a unit, just move it to any city or building that you control, even your own HQ. The only city in range, uh, this is the only city in range, so please move it here. Great job. This tank unit will now recover 2 HP every turn it remains here. That tank won't have a chance to recover if we can't stop the enemy tanks from reaching it. Oh dear. And your other tanks aren't in great shape either, oh dear. Luckily, there's a way to regain HP and block the bridge at the same time. I'll show you how. First, let this tank unit. Now move this tank to the spot in front of the bridge so that only one unit can reach an attack at a time. Since enemy units can uh, move over opposing units, we can use the tank to block the bridge. This tactic is called a building def a defensive wall. So I'll drop you off there. That tank won't last long in its current state, so select this other tank and I'll show you how to join them. Now if you move this tank directly onto your other damaged tank, they will be merged. Move the tank here and select join. 
See, your tank is fully repaired. Excellent work. When two units join, they combine their HP. Of course, now the only now that there's only one unit left, but that's sometimes better than two damaged ones. I know that two units may seem better than one strategically, but running around with low HP is very risky for most units. Also remember, damage units deal less damage when attacking. Now that you repaired a single tank, uh, now that you repaired, now that your repaired single tank will be able to hold the bridge. And while that happens, your damage tank can be repaired. One more thing when you join two units, it ends their turn, so be sure you anticipate that. I see that you're really starting to understand the strategies of war. I just... no, I just have a few more things to teach you. It's great to see that we have an artillery unit, but there's a problem. Our artillery unit is out of ammo, and it's completely out of fuel, too. Yikes! This unit can't fire without ammo, and it can't move without fuel. In its current condition, it's practically useless. Lucky for that, we have some transport units available. Let me show you how to use them. These transports, uh, these transport units are called Armored Personnel Carriers, or APCs for short. Let's select an APC unit first. Now move to the artillery unit. Now, to make the artillery unit usable, we need to move the APC Jason to it and give it some supplies. So we'll just move this over here and we'll feed him some supplies and now it's Great back in job. use. When you supply a unit, you fill its ammo and fuel to maximum levels. This, this time, we'll give the supplies only to one unit, but APC units can also provide supplies to any other adjacent units simultaneously. Don't forget, you can supply units by placing them in allied buildings where they will also heal. However, transport units are best used when you're on the move. Now that the artillery unit is ready, let's go ahead and use it. Please select it now. Artillery are indirect fire units. That means they can fire from a long distance without fear of counterfire. Artillery units can't move and fire at the same turn, but the range of an artillery unit is two to three spaces. And once you know it, it looks like we have a target within range. Go ahead and fire. It's always good to have a uh, nicely placed artillery unit. Careful placement of indirect fire units is also vital to winning battles. Try to keep enemy units from engaging them directly and you will succeed. There are other ways to win too. You see these buildings? They are the headquarters of each army. We call them HQs for short. If you capture the enemy HQ, you instantly win the battle. Be careful though, the same rule applies to the enemy if the enemy captures your HQ, so always make sure to keep it safe. Now it seems like the enemy has wandered too far from their HQ and left it, us an opening. However, your mech unit won't reach it in time to capture it. That's where having a second APC gives us an edge. Let's let the mech unit load him into the APC. We can load a mech or infantry unit into a transport unit by moving them onto the same space. Go ahead and move him here. And you go, buddy. Great, you loaded the mech unit into the transport unit. Now it's ready to roll out. Let's let the load the APC and let's send it over to the HQ. Yes. You could wait here and the mech unit won't take damage while inside the APC. Although if the APC happens to be destroyed, both units will be lost. But right now we want to capture the enemy HQ, so select drop in the menu. Now place the mech unit directly onto the enemy HQ. Now you have a healthy unit on the enemy's HQ, you can begin to capture the HQ on your next turn. Your mech unit is in place, your tank unit has set up a defensive wall, and your artillery is fully supplied. You're doing great! Just focus on capturing the HQ and protect that bridge. End turn and finish it up. First and foremost, let's get you taken care of.
Ooh, nice. Got a critical hit. So, there's another factor, and it's really good because we have Nell as our CO, because her whole thing is about being lucky and getting criticals. Is even though it did a seven, it showed a 70, and there was still eight HP for the tank unit there because we got that critical. It did a little bit more damage and was able to knock that tank out no problem. And we'll get you working on the capture of the HQ up here, and we'll just end the turn right now because there's not really anything else for us to do. Hopefully these guys should be able to hold out. Is what I would have said. Well, it's a good thing I got those APCs there. But it doesn't really matter because, well... We can just capture the HQ and instantly win. But also, I just want to cause as much damage as I can. So we're just going to drop some artillery right on these guys' head. And now we capture. Congratulations! The lessons are all complete now. You're ready to take on anything Wars World can throw at you. And just in time, too. I'm getting reports that enemy forces have invaded Orange Star. One last thing to remember. Keep an eye on your stats, but luck plays a small part in every battle. Keep this in mind, and I know you'll do us proud. I'll see you around. Nice work. With that, your field training is now complete. Congrats. So how was it? Did you happen to learn anything new? As you may know, that just covered the basics. Since there's more to learn, I'll still be around to offer advice as you work your way through the missions. Anyhow, it looks like we're re really getting ready to get started with the story. 